Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today, a treat especial. This uh, super rare from 1995-1996 Snap-on SP816 waveform demo board. Uh, we got a part in a little bit of the AVE intro there, but I am pretty excited to have this in my hands. Um, these things are super rare. They are made by Snap-on in order to demonstrate their uh, oscilloscope products for the automotive market and to show um, techs that are prospective buyers of this thing and educational settings like the one I am from um, what a waveform will look like, a normal one and a glitch one uh, for this one here. And over here, it's to look at two different types of injector pulses. In the 90s, it was really important to diagnose injectors using a um, oscilloscope because the uh, pulses are where you had the issues. Some of them were normal, some of them are not. So without an oscilloscope, you couldn't see what the injector was doing. So yeah, you got uh, kind of, you got oscilloscopes and, and these kinds of things to play around with. I'm going to give you a quick tour on the back side. Uh, this, this is a borrowed unit, so I can't do any uh, prodding and probing, but I will give you some up close shots of the board on the back. And if you guys want to reverse engineer it, you can do that yourselves. And then we're going to hook this up to an oscilloscope and I'm going to be using the Hantec uh, 6022BE, I think. This is an oscilloscope I've had for a little bit, a USB one. A lot of automotive folks want to try this oscilloscope, so I have it. I might as well uh, show you guys how it works for automotive stuff. Let's take a look at this board. I'm going to have to provide some high-res imagery in the comments below because I cannot film at 4K on this setup. Um, I tried many times to ask for a 4K camera from uh, various manufacturers, but uh, yeah, channel's too small for that. And, you know, I can't really afford an upgrade. So here is the backside of it. We're looking at the output here. There's the serial number and... If you head over this way, these are the outputs here. So one, two, and three, and then on top is a ground. One, two, and three. This one here, that's that's a ground. So you've got a few chippies here. You've got no chips on the front side, if I'm not mistaken, only switches and pots. So you've got a couple chips here. You guys will be able to read what these chips are, but not me, because I cannot see on my tiny little screen. You guys are watching in glorious 1080p. I know it's a little bit behind the times, but it is what it is. Um, it looks like these are some capacitors to set timing of some sort. Look at that. There's uh, transistors and capacitors in this kind of network over here, and that's going to and from this chip here. Again, no idea what this is. I'm just giving you guys a look at it before it goes back into the toolbox of a professor only to be busted out one or two times a year to demonstrate oscilloscopes. So yeah, I think it's pretty neat. Check the uh, link in the description for the high-res image. Got the Hantec 6022BE all plugged in and ready to go. I have uh, one probe in times 10 mode and we're going to hook up a 9 volt battery to this guy and see what happens. Now, uh, this was 1995-1996, so there are no LEDs. You know, LEDs were still kind of expensive back then. They, were, they existed, but uh, they were expensive. We're going to hook up on the ground here, and we're going to start up here, so variable frequency. So I'm going to grab this here, and we're seeing something on the screen now but let me hit the auto button and see how well this thing does. There we go. So we can see the waveform here. Quite a bit of over and undershoot. I wonder what happens if I put it in times one. Yeah, times one it loads it down, but you can see there's over and undershoot there. And I can change the frequency by twiddling the pot here. 
very interesting. I may have to adjust this probe's uh, capacitance with the scope, but if I if I load it down and put it in times one mode, let's see if I hit auto again. There we go. That's a nice solid square wave, and I can open this up. Takes a little takes a minute to stabilize once you make adjustments, and change the waveform. There we go. So I'm just changing the variable frequency pot on the device. Now let's happen. Let, what, let's see what happens if we add a glitch. So I added a glitch. Oh, we see every once in a while it flips, but I guess the glitch is going to be rare. So we're actually going to have to increase the time base. So I'm going to modify a couple settings here. There we go. The screen is completely saturated with the signal now, and you see that block, that hole every once in a while just appearing on the screen. That is the glitch. So that would be, it's not quite realistic because it seems to do like, you know, 100 or 150 cycles or more, and then there is something missing. So that would be like equivalent to, let's say, uh, a wire vibrating and, um, and touching, you know, shorting to ground every once in a while. I thought it was more like a glitch, like you typically see, like you have a wheel for the signal, and there's maybe a hundred teeth on that wheel, and one of the teeth is broken, and so you would see it as a hole in your signal. But I mean, it still gets the point across. Yeah, you just caught it right there. So yeah, this works. It does show what it looks like. Let's switch now to the variable voltage. Okay, so it looks like we have a solid voltage here. The glitch is still active. I'm not sure if it'll do anything. But if I move the pot, yeah, it moves the voltage. Oh yeah, I saw a little glitch there. Okay, let's go um, let's go with a little bit longer time base, see if we can catch that glitch. Oh yeah, there we go. You see the downward spike every once in a while? That is the glitch, and I can vary the voltage in real time here. Yeah, it's a little bit slow to react. It's got a lot of samples to run through here. So yeah, it's not it's not fantastic because the trigger is a positive edge trigger, so it should show us every time there's a glitch. But yeah, it's not quite updating in real time, but you would catch a glitch on a um, on a problematic car like that. Let me switch back into times 10. Yeah, you do see the glitch there. Okay, now let's go down to the fuel injector. And this is set to, right now this is the peak and hold. Oh, that's not bad. Let's see if we can hit auto and see what it gives us. I don't I don't think that's accurate. There we go. You can see that now. Let me adjust the time base to stretch that out a little bit. Trying to drag it a little bit more centered there. So this is what we're looking at. This is we're looking at a uh, peak and hold style injector. So the first downward dip is when the injector first actuates, moves the little pintle over, and then when we take the power off of it, 
That's that first voltage spike you see heading north there. Then the pintle is still moved at that point, so we'll give it some voltage again, but at a co constant current this time. So we're limiting the current, and then we cut the power again, it gives us another voltage spike. And we can even change the length, there we go, change the length of the constant current section that's between the two spikes of the pulse width of the injector. There we go. Now let's try to move it down to the saturated injector mode. This is an injector that has its own resistance, so we just have to give it constant power. We don't, uh, we don't have to limit its current, so you don't see the two spikes. And let me increase the pulse width. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, this is exactly what an injector looks like on an oscilloscope. So yeah, pretty neat. And so there you have it. This was intentionally a quick video about the Snap-on SP816 waveform demo board uh, using the Hantec 6022BE. Um, this scope I will be using more and more very recently so that I can do a proper review of it. So far it's looking good. If you want to get one of these there's a link in the description below. Um, this thing here is quite the oddity. So if you guys have any specific questions, I can ask my coworker if I can keep it for a little longer, but I think he's been without it for quite a while and I think he's getting worried. So yeah, any questions, stick them in the comments below. Um, one more question for those of you who stayed this long onto the video. Do you want me to start a second automotive focused channel? Or do you want me to do more automotive stuff here? Those are the two questions I want you to answer. Answer in the comments below. Thanks for watching.